Welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Grace Egan, Executive Director of the New Jersey Foundation for Aging. The Foundation's mission is to enable seniors to live with independence and dignity in their communities. Aging Insight is produced by the Foundation to provide information and resources to boomers, seniors, and caregivers, with the primary focus of the program to connect people to their community-based services. Today, there are approximately 700,000 people in New Jersey living with diabetes, and this includes 22% of New Jersey residents over age 65. Unlike some conditions, type 2 diabetes is not seen at birth, nor is it a genetic disorder. The Healthcare Quality Strategies Quality Insight Network is doing work across New Jersey to help residents to self-manage this disease condition. And today, we're happy to welcome Karen Hale, Outreach Coordinator for the program, and Donald, a recent program participant. Thank you both for being here. You're Thank um, you. I think it's a very important topic. And Karen, can you tell us about the Health Care Quality Strategies, Inc.? Yes, um, we're a nonprofit organization, and we've actually been in New Jersey for um, three decades already. Thirty years. Wow. Yeah, um, we've actually uh, we partner with um, other organizations, nonprofits, um, groups um, to make health care safer, mm -hmm. um, to make it more accessible, and to make it more cost effective. Um, and and um, that that's what we do. And specifically, today we want to talk about the work that the Quality Insight Network, which is part of your organization, does for self-management programs, and in particular, um, type 2 diabetes. So can you tell us about this initiative? Yes. Uh, this is a new initiative taken up um, by, um, by us. Uh, we have a, a special grant that is being funded by Medicare. And it's actually being um, implemented uh, nationwide. Um, we are partnered up with our QIO with five different QIO. I Let's yes. say what that means. Uh, quality Improvement Organization. Thank you very much. Um, and we're partnered up with five different states um, with um, Louisiana, um, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And we're all working together, learning from each other um, um, on what are the best practices and um, what other places mm -hmm. are doing. And so um, here in New Jersey, we are utilizing the diabetes um, self-management um, program, um, which is a curriculum that was um, created by Stanford University. Stanford, wow. OK, so is that what's used in other states, or do they? does everybody have a choice? Uh, other states have a choice. Okay. Um, they could use this mm -hmm. program that we're using here in mm -hmm. New Jersey, or they could also use another program um, called DEEP, oh. which was created by okay. the University of Chicago. Oh, interesting. And how long is the session usually? Uh, the workshops um, run for six weeks, mm -hmm. and the, each workshop is for two and a half hours. Oh, okay. And so, do you have a sense of how many sessions you've done in New Jersey? Yes, um, we've actually completed um, 39 workshops mm -hmm. um, here. Um, we've been uh, doing this project for about two and a half years. Um, we've got th three underway currently, and we've got about 10 scheduled. 10 scheduled. And mm -hmm. um, during that time in the 39 workshops, we've been able to serve um, about uh, 575 oh. um, people. Mm -hmm. have, have gone through these workshops. Yeah, and I'm, with, I'm sure it gives them some life-altering information, which you know I'm sure Donald will help us um, explain to people. But it's very nice that you've been able to do this. And um, I was going to say, how large are the groups? Well, with Stanford, uh, the curriculum states that um, the workshops can be no smaller than 10 people mm -hmm. and no larger than 20 people. Mm. Um, reason being is that um, these classes are not a stand and deliver. They're very in their What does that mean? Stand and deliver is um, what you typically would think, um, I think Charlie Brown's teacher just standing in the, you know, on the front of the class and just kind of talking. Oh, lecturing. And lecturing and, okay. and um, you know, everyone taking notes. Um, where the workshops that we're doing, um, it's very different because it's very interactive. Oh, okay. um, the people that are coming to the classes, they could be um, pre-diabetic um, or they could be a caregiver right. or, a, or a diabetic and they're living with this. So we want to share, we want to know what, mm -hmm. what that you already know and, um, and have others learn from each other. Oh, okay. So it um, creates probably a support system ultimately, I would think. Yes. If it works well. 
So, you know, as I mentioned in the opening um, comments, there really are 700,000 people in New Jersey that have diabetes, which to me is a very large number. Yes. And 22% uh, of all people over 65. So I'm just curious, are there clearly risk factors that we should acknowledge as we're there talking about this? There are some risk factors. Uh, some of the risk factors would be um, definitely if you are inactive. If, if, if you don't you have- sedentary. Se yes, yeah, sedentary lifestyle. Okay. Okay. You're, you're not active at all. Um, that, that could be a risk factor. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is um, being a minority. A minority mm -hmm. like myself, um, a Hispanic, mm -hmm. or being African American, um, or uh, Asian American, those are already um, risk factors okay. um, uh, uh, for us. Um, another thing is if you've had um, a lot of weight. Okay. Um, gaining weight, okay. um, all those oh, things. fluctuations or just, just always? Just a lot of gain weight. Okay. A lot of gain weight and again, um, not being active, not exercising, mm -hmm. not eating the right foods, um, all those things can be risk factors mm -hmm. um, for diabetes. Mm -hmm. And do you think, given your work, that it, type 2 diabetes is on the rise? We know that um, type 2 diabetes is on the rise. It's on the rise um, uh, with um, I think with with all people, not only with, right. um, with seniors, right. but we we're seeing it with um, younger generations as well. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's. I know there's a whole series of exercise programs in the schools that they're trying to do, but um, perhaps that's a captured audience. And when you think of adults that are working or at home, it's probably a little more difficult to um, do that. So that sounds like your program really offers them that structure. Um, are there other health conditions that are frequently seen along with type 2 diabetes? Yes, um, some of the conditions um, uh, can be uh, heart disease. Heart disease mm -hmm. is, is number one. Um, that, that is a condition. Um, the second thing I think would be some uh, eye complications. Okay. Um, people experiencing, you know, um, problems with their vision, um, and um, actually their eye doctor can can tell you. Do you oh. know that you have diabetes? Oh, really? If, if the person doesn't even know it, right? Their eye doctor might be able to to see it through their eye test. Yeah. So it's really important that we get our eyes checked. Um, our skin. Uh, people oh, what that do you have. Mean? Um, diabetes have, can have problems with their skin. Um, their skin tends to be a little bit more sensitive, particularly hmm. in the feet. Um, so, really? So people that have oh, that's the neuropathy piece or uh, not? Um, not really. Okay. It, it's it's tied to it, mm -hmm. but people that have um, diabetes uh, need to really take care of their feet more so than hmm. um, everyone else um, because their skin's a little bit more sensitive. And, um, and then that neuropathy, that loss of sensation, oh, okay. um, starts to happen. Uh, that, but neuropathy can happen not only in the feet, right. it could also happen in the hands. Hmm. So, uh, so, th so that's another thing. And then of course, um, having issues with, with the kidneys. Kidney disease. K yeah, having issues with your kidneys is, is, some, is another complication right. of diabetes. I imagine that's very chronic as well. Yes. So um, anyway, I think that, um, but given what our conversation has covered in the past and plus the self-management aspect, you give me every indication that you can control type yes. 2 diabetes. Yes, you can. Um, so that's what this workshop is all about. It's about self-managing and, mm -hmm. and um, having the person take care of themselves. So mm -hmm. um, this workshop provides people with tools um, that they themselves can apply in their own lives. Um, because in the class, we don't really talk about a diet um, we, no one wants to live their life on a diet, no. <laughs> um, so, so we don't talk about that. Um, we talk about um, how you can make some small changes and adjustments mm -hmm. in your current way of eating in life so that you can live healthier and longer. Is there an example you can give? Um, well, I think an example that we can give uh, is, um, I think, um, having more veggies Okay. Um, maybe having like a, a meatless Monday, um, which is t it's pretty popular now. Um, you know, uh, w maybe once a week or once a month. It's good for your budget too, perhaps. It's, yeah, definitely. <laughs> perhaps. You know, um, not having those fries all the time, mm -hmm. and maybe having a side salad, mm -hmm. um, and um, small adjustments. S small adjustments, and then 
you know, putting in a little bit of exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and this class, what we do is uh, action plans every oh. single week. Mm -hmm. So um, a little bit like a little goal. And you're individual. Individual. Mm -hmm. It's up to the individual person of what whatever their action plan can be, anything. Um, and so um, we've had people that will say, uh, "I will exercise during the commercial breaks." You oh, know? okay. And um, mm -hmm. and but we say, you know, let's make it a little bit more realistic. So we we try and help with with action plans. How about maybe doing some three times a week, mm -hmm. maybe for just one show, right. and you know, not. That, and people come back and tell you how they did. Yes, we always report okay. back on how on how their action plans um, went, and and then they become accountable to everybody else in the group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some people will have some successes, some people will have some, you know, challenges. Challenges, yeah. and some people, you know, and and we will learn from that. You know, if they did have some challenges, it's what were the barriers that stopped them from succeeding, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and then we, we can talk about it and we can problem solve it as a group if the individual wants. That's a, that's a good idea. I mean, even when you think of other problems in your life, if you have a friend or something you share, you get an interesting idea and you go, oh, I didn't think yeah, of that. Yeah, exactly. So it's um, kind of nice. Um, how does someone enroll in the sessions? Or how do um, they find out about it and how do they enroll? Yeah, these classes are free, totally free. You that's don't have to thing. pay a single penny. Um, they're completely free. Uh, we ha our schedule is on our website mm -hmm. at www.hqsi.org. Okay. Um, we've got our schedule of our workshops on there. The and next ten that you said you mentioned that yeah, you have. Okay. okay. The next ones that are coming up, and um, they can contact us through there. Mm -hmm. um, they can also um, reach out to us um, with our phone number. Mm -hmm. um, which we'll put on the screen, okay. so, just th so you don't have to say Okay, it. thank you. Okay. And, and they can reach out to us um, through that, mm -hmm. and um, they can register for a class, or they can call us with questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, or, that's nice. Or we're, we're all actually also looking for places that are looking for, you know, uh, a workshop themselves. So Good. if they think, you know, I think we could host a workshop um, in our church or um, at, a senior our, center? at a senior center or a women's group. Okay. Or you know, at, at a lodge. Okay. If if anyone has space, because we can't pay for the space, right. we're a nonprofit organization. So you go um, anywhere. We is what you will said. go anywhere in the <laughs> state, anywhere up and down, east and west. We are very happy to go. Um, again, we would require just ten people minimum, minimum. for a workshop. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know you mentioned the action plan, but are there any other incentives that besides probably that camaraderie that sort of and may maybe Donald knows incentives, just the idea that, you know, you get to sort of be with others. So maybe we'll we can ask him that question. Yeah. Um, I think we also provide a book um, okay. as an learning incentive, materials. A okay. learning material that okay. was um, written by the people that wrote the curriculum, so mm -hmm. it's written by Stanford um, University as mm -hmm. well, and we use it in the class right. um, so that people can get an idea of how to use mm -hmm. the book and what are some of the things in the book. It's, right. it's a wonderful book. It's large print, mm -hmm. and it's not just for diabetes. It's it's called Living a Life with Chronic Conditions, oh, so okay. it, it can be applied for lots of different things. It's it's very helpful, right. wonderful book. And you could put your probably your action plans in there and yes, you create can. new ones, so yes. that sounds like a good thing. Donald, as all that Karen has told us, I think your experience as a recent participant would probably even tell our viewers more. So how did you find out about the session? Well, I found out about, through the session about, um, I was at the YMCA, mm -hmm. and I just saw it on a flyer. Okay. They printed it on the magazine. I said, I think I better get in here and see mm -hmm. what's going on. Were you recently diagnosed yes. at that time? As Karen realizes, I came there, I was very nervous. I was very upset, almost distraught, because um, diabetes is running rampant in my family. Okay. I've seen toes. Amputated. Am many amputations, yeah. fingers, blindness. Wow. wow. And um, I'm like, oh, wow, they have diabetes. That's bad. That's sad. I feel sorry for them. Then all of a sudden, doctor said, yo, you got it. Yeah. Then I'm like, whoa, toes are coming off. I'm going to go blind. And I saw this sign mm. there, and I read it, and I called Karen and got set up. And um, what I did was I attacked it. There you, you go. Know, I, everything that the diabetes needs to thrive, I made sure I didn't have it. Okay. I changed my diet, which was not a big deal. Right. Well, that's good. To you know, know. I'm, all the fast foods and the greasy foods, I didn't eat that anyway. Yeah. And I went to my, you always hear about super vegetables. Mm 
-hmm. things like superfoods, I went that way. Mm -hmm. And I came to the class, of course, which kept me on, on, on track. Also, I found that I was not alone. There were other people that had it. Right. How long was your class? The class was on six weeks. Okay. That's the class you're just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in the class. The class lasted six weeks. Um, I met people that had it. Some mm -hmm. people had it worse than I did. Some people right. just starting. And we all talked. We started hanging out together. Mm -hmm. And like we see somebody, hey, don't eat that. You know better. And like, yeah. oh, I wasn't eating it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm just like going to look. <laughs> and you know, I tell people all the time, it's like, I don't feel any symptoms. Oh, really? No. I feel a twinge in my fingers once in a while. But I thought that's because I, you know, just just happened. Right. And so when I started working out more, but they said an old China, Chinese person said, your most things to worry about is circulation. Right. And so they say, well, keep the heart pumping, keep the blood circling, keep things moving. But you wake your body up, you just sit still, something's always going to come up on you. Yeah. So you were already walking into the why. Were you, Yes. Is, was this new for you, a new experience in terms of eating the why, or were you a regular why attender? I'm just curious. Um, I came, I wasn't regular, but I, you know, I'd go like two, three times a week. Oh, okay. And I, used to be a, I used to be an athlete at one time. Okay. And so when I heard I had diabetes, I said, okay, I'm going to do some real running and get in here and get something going. Okay. So if you have diabetes, first you've got to talk to your doctor and find out what you can and can't do. Sure. And support group always helps because if you're in a good frame of mind, that right there is half the right. battle. Right. Was this the first time you ever took a course like this? Yes, it was, and um, it won't be the last either. There you go. So you have a, you may even yeah, have a peer out. trainer. She I was going to say because we didn't even talk about that, but we'll get there. Mm -hmm. So how did you? F I mean, you sort of touched on how you found the information so helpful, but you mentioned your diet and exercise and diet, other things that exercise, you did. Exercise, motion. I lost thirty pounds. Oh my goodness. Um, it was thirty pounds I shouldn't have had anyway, and I think it's about twenty attitude. more I should get rid of. But um, outside of that, I had an attitude. I went with an attitude. I had a support group. We have each other's phone number. The people in the class, we call each other. Are you being good? Are you sticking with your action plan? Okay. Oh, yes, yes, I am. And, you know, sometimes you find somebody that's down. You try to talk to them, help them out. Like, you know, we're all here. We're here to talk. We're here to hang out, whatever. Right. Um, outside of that, the eating. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, reaching out to each other is the main thing. Mm -hmm. And always do what you're supposed to do. Always have a doctor watch it. Don't think you're going to... Do you Do in involve a doctor? I'm just curious. We or very you? much encourage people okay. to um, talk to their doctor mm -hmm. and let them know that they're taking the course oh, okay. and uh, any questions that they might have because we're not medical professionals mm -hmm. to, uh, to reach out to their doctor for those questions mm -hmm. um, because everybody's an individual, everybody's taking different medications. Right. Um, that you know, mm -hmm. we we don't know. Um, so we very much encourage people to reach out to their doctor, to mm -hmm. reach out to their health educator, to their dietitian for more personalized questions that we might not be able to answer in the mm -hmm. class. Yeah, I think that's important. And Donald Karen mentioned medication. Was that a choice for you too? No, it wasn't. It um, wasn't a choice or a choice you didn't take? I didn't have to have, uh, oh. I didn't have to have it. Okay. I was just in the early stages and the doctor okay. said, look, we can try to do this and manage it. Mm -hmm. It can be managed. So I said, how do you do it? He said, you've got to learn how to eat, what to eat. Okay. And that's where I came into Karen mm -hmm. and I started doing what they said. I started eating proper, things you pull the void, you know, and I did that. And I found out when I went back to my doctor some mm -hmm. um, hmm. months later, it's even bored now. So you right. can control it. I'm living proof of it. Right. When I first came to class, I showed them my results. Then I came back in, I'm like, whoa. And the doctor himself, after the class, when I went back there, the nurse was like, kept asking, is Donald in yet? I'm like, right here. She said, you look like your younger brother. Oh, well, that's good because you lost all yeah, that weight. Yeah, they're all lean and everything. She goes, I got to take your weight now. And so I was like 30 pounds down. Wow. And the doctor comes in and says, like, I've been doing this for like 60 years. I never saw this before. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, when people start taking care of themselves, you're going to see it a lot more. Right. Because I told people, I said, um, diabetes is, crosses all color lines, crosses all it ages. It does. It really does. It does not discriminate. Right. And you got to go after it. You know, people always say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. Do not do procrastinate because it won't. Yeah. Once you got it, it's going to run rampant mm -hmm. if you let it. I think I heard you use the phrase, and I haven't used it today, about beating the bully? Is that, yes. is that, your, is that your phrase? <laughs> That's my phrase. What it was, was I was afraid of it. It had beaten okay. me down, and I was running around for help, and I said, you know, I have to stand and fight. So okay. when I felt, um, felt things going my way, emotionally, everything, I felt, you know, wow. When I got my blood work back, I, said, I just felt like I just beat up a bully. There you go. And I'm going to go brag to everybody. There you go. And I said to them, I said, look, there's lots of approaches you can take to diabetes. Mm -hmm. Some people want to go with the doctor and um, get medication you might have to have. Some people want to eat. I'm doing what they told me. Well, I told people, you know, some people take the ostrich approach. 
which is the okay. ostrich approach. Yes, which is okay if okay. you're aware of what you left uncovered. And so that works too in a mm -hmm. bad way. Yeah. So you take something that's going to shadow you, and you got to just make sure it doesn't catch up. Right. Right. Well, I do think um, you're probably a wonderful spokesperson, so that Karen should just take you around the state to get more more people to enroll in these programs. And so um, I did ask you before where people would find out about the programs. Your website is Our website is, is our best mm -hmm. um, place. Mm -hmm. uh, we're constantly updating it with um, the newest um, workshops that we've mm -hmm. added. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, mm -hmm. it, it's the best place. Mm -hmm. It does sound like the program really encourages um, the bonding or the experience of uh, sort of uh, of the participants. I think you mentioned the buddy system to me. Yes. Um, so what we encourage um, after the class um, is to exchange phone numbers mm -hmm. um, with a new person after each class um, so that they can call each other uh, mm -hmm. for support for the week mm -hmm. and check up on each other about how their action plans are going mm -hmm. because every week we make new action plans right. And so we want um, people just to be accountable to someone else mm -hmm. and to ask for support if they need it. And, and that's why they um, will just choose whoever mm -hmm. they want. We don't you know, say you've got to go with so-and-so. Right. It, it's, it's, it, it is optional. Some people choose not to. Who's wondering. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but people tend to do pretty well. Mm -hmm. and, and people stay for the six sessions? I mean, what's your feel I, about that? Um, we have about a 75% uh, percent completion very rate. very good, though. 75% mm -hmm. completion rate. And with um, Donald, you'll have uh, yeah. 125 percent. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the goal. That's I what we so. hope. You know, um, so we we do. We encourage people to 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 talk mm -hmm. to each other and mm -hmm. call each other for support, mm -hmm. um, and and to be there because they're, they're the ones that are going through it and really yes, understand exactly. what's going on in a day to day. You know, like you could be having a bad day. It's like today I I I, I was bad. I, I went through McDonald's drive through and I ordered the number whatever. Right. You know, and what? you can call your buddy and say I did that, and your buddy can tell you, well, you know, it's, Tomorrow, it happens. Tomorrow's a Tomorrow's, new day. You know. Do something else, you know, exactly. exercise, work out, right. um, or, or whatever that is. Compensate for yep. that that moment. Mm -hmm. that or they moment. can, you know, uh, we've seen um, walking groups get started as well. Mm -hmm. Walking groups have gotten started, um, and we've seen people that that really like to get together. Or they'll get together and they'll they'll meet before the class and have breakfast, or they'll go afterwards and have like a lunch. Mm -hmm. And this is spontaneous, completely choosing all the right foods for that that's, lunch or breakfast. That's what we hope. Yeah, exactly. Donald, do, do you have a, a similar sense about the bonding experience with your participants? Oh yes, um, we call each other quite often. Mm -hmm. um, we like meet sometimes at the center and just hang out and just talk mm -hmm. about what we've done or. Yeah, I fell off yesterday, okay, so right. we're going to look out for you. Right. One of us is in the hospital. Oh, really? <clears throat> People went down to visit, they just talked. And um, things are working out real good, because like, you know you're not alone, there's always a thing of exactly. safety in numbers. Mm -hmm. And even in a, in a whole group, somebody's always weak, there's always somebody strong. Right. And so you you're not all other. weak, so you can pull the other one through. Right. Uh, I've had a, I, had, I had like four deaths in my family in the past six months. Wow. So I was like just wandering like a zombie. Mm -hmm. People that spoke to me, and I feel better now. Mm -hmm. And that's all I could say. I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah, I think the idea that other people understand what you're going through, not only with your health, but then when you right. roll in family issues, which can really stop you in your tracks from doing all the things you know you should be doing. Well, I always tell people, if you've got your head on right, you got everything going. Right. So you got to keep, got to keep, your, keep your mostly keep your, mm -hmm. keep your feelings up. You know, keep your attitude flowing mm -hmm. in the right direction, and you pretty much topple anything. Yeah, I was going to say, probably that attitude. Do you see that coming up in your sessions where you have to sort of, like, give people the ability to choose a new direction, you know, uh, the EOR character, making them feel like they can, as Donald has said, kind of uh, conquer this? Um, I think that that comes with, with time in the class. For some okay. people, it clicks right away, mm -hmm. and some people, it takes just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. they, they, you know, it... it it just takes a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this, the Stanford class offers these different tools. Mm -hmm. So some people might gravitate to the action plans and say, I really love these, while somebody else might say, you know what, I really like. We also teach some relaxation techniques okay. because stress, stress is, is mm -hmm. horrible for diabetes, just like anything else, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so some people might say, you know what, I really like the relaxation, mm -hmm. and this is what helps me mm -hmm. feel better. You know, I, I might not do the buddy thing, right. I might not right. do this, but the relaxation things that we mm -hmm. have, you know, that we teach so people. So it's a menu that they yeah. can actually choose from. Right. 
Okay, well, I think that's very helpful. And um, Donald, is there something that you really would like our audience to understand, some, some impact that this made on your life besides, you know, feeling fit and getting um, your weight under control and a couple of other things? I mean, you've really touched on a lot, but what, what should someone really know? Well, someone really know that um, if you have a good attitude mm -hmm. and you try to eat right, I don't mean eat perfectly healthy or not, right. but just hang in there because you don't have it today, but you can have it tomorrow. Right. And somebody might have it t um, tomorrow you can help with, you can bond with, and always be aware and just take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Right. And it sounds like these classes really give people that structure that they can um, find something that will lead them on the right path when, as, as Donald, as a newly diagnosed individual, knew that there were things he could yes. step up and do. So I think it's very exciting um, that they're, you're going around the state yes. and the programs are free. Totally free. And, you know, this is a, a good thing. And um, I imagine that you do, do you do them at all times of the day or is it? We try and do them um, at all times of the day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we try and um, allow the location to set the oh, time okay. for whatever is most convenient for um, their clients or their patrons or, you know, mm -hmm. so for them. So um, usually they tend to happen during the day. Um, in the morning time, mm -hmm. we've scheduled some on the weekends. Oh, um, good. The evening ones haven't been that successful for us. Right. Um, the daytimes have been have been the, mo yeah, the most successful. Well, I do think that um, I'm very happy that we could actually feature this show. It is the first show we've ever done on type 2 diabetes. And so I think that our audience really has learned a lot from both of you. So I, it's exciting for us to be able to showcase what you're doing. And we, you know, with Donald's promotion <laughs> and your availability, we're sure that you will have people saying, we, we, we want this program. Yes, that's what we want. Church, Senior Center, and um, other places. So thank you both for really sharing your time with us today. I think that it's, um, as I said, it's always useful information that I think if you don't have diabetes, you know someone that does have it. So right. um, anyway. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Aging Insights as, um, is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging and is made possible by donations to the foundation. To become a sponsor for Aging Insights, please go to our website at www.njfoundationforaging.org or you can call our office at 609-421-0206. All of our previous shows may be viewed on our website or on YouTube. To find out about senior services in your area, please contact your county office on aging. Their numbers are on our website, and you may call the state hotline number at 1-877-222-3737. Thank you for watching this episode of Aging Insights, and remember, aging is everyone's business. <laughs>